The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. From time to time, most men and women ask themselves... What are my chances of being 100% self-supporting when it's time to stop work? Well, that's largely up to the decision you make now. Opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence in your 60s. Listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Jewel Theft. Its title, The Fraudulent Healer. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation deals with a very shrewd and carefully planned confidence game. Bear in mind that confidence men and women are among the elite of the criminal world. Many of them are excellent amateur psychologists. They play expertly on the heartstrings of their victims by appealing to one of two normal human desires. The first is the natural need of lonely people for friendship and affection. The second basis of many confidence rackets is greed. The victim is lured on by the prospect of making easy money. Tonight's case has been chosen for dramatization for a very simple reason. The more you, the public, become familiar with the techniques employed by this type of crook, the better you will be prepared to protect yourself against them. Tonight's FBI file opens on a lush green hillside some 30 miles from a large western city. An attractive girl in a simple cotton dress, wearing almost no makeup, sits on a tree stump and stares at the rolling clouds. She is so lost in thought she fails to hear a man approaching until he speaks. Hello. Hmm? I had to see if you were real. Oh, don't go, please. I saw you through these binoculars. I couldn't tell if you were a statue. I'm or... quite real. Hey, look, I'm not a masher or a peeping Tom. I use these glasses for my hobby. I'm a bee fancier. I'm studying a hive in that oak tree by the fence, the old one. Know anything about bees? Really, I have to leave. And bees flap their wings 16,000 times a minute. They can fly seven miles without stopping. They get up to a speed of 20 miles an hour. They've got two pair of wings, one in back of the other. Thank you for the information. Oh, there's a lot more about bees I haven't told you. I'll be at the oak tree tomorrow afternoon, the old one by the fence. Hello there. Shh. Come over here. See inside the crevice? Uh huh. That's their hive. It runs down to the tree. Those bees in the outer lip, they're the sentries. They keep strangers out. And see the bees flapping their wings? Uh huh. They're fanners. They ventilate the hive. <laughs> I thought bees just went around stinging people. That's propaganda. Oh, uh, by the way, my name's Bruce. <laughs> Mine's Mary. Here, take the binoculars and get up on this incline. Why? Oh, look down to the hole. You can see the comb. Oh. The cells on top are a little bigger than the others. They got queen bee eggs in them. Uh-huh. They've been there 11 days. It takes them 16 to hatch. Oh. When the first one's ready, the wax will be scraped off the end of the cell and there'll be a new queen. I'm sorry I'm late. Hi, Mary. I thought you weren't coming today. I almost didn't. What happened? You get tired of the job already? No, I... Well, I didn't know whether I ought to keep meeting you. Why not? 
Oh. Where's the notebook? In my briefcase. Here we are. I remembered the pencil this time. Uh, how far did we get yesterday? Oh, wait, I'll look. Let's see. Yeah, here. Uh, 445, mild activity outside Queen Bee Cells, 15th day. All right, let's start today's page. All right. 3 p.m., great activity outside upper right hand, Queen Bee Cell. Other five dormant. Mm -hmm. Oh, will they get a new queen today? <laughs> You'll know if they do. How? Oh, well, the old queen will be driven out of the comb. Just like that? Uh-huh. A few of the bees will escort her to the lip and push her out if she won't leave willingly. When she does go, somewhere between 60 and 70,000 bees will follow her. Where to? Oh, she's already sent scouting bees looking for a good place to make a new hive. She'll go wherever they pick. Hello, Mary. Oh, hello. Dear, you know this is against the rules. I should report you, but I won't. <laughs> what is this? Come on, dear. We'll go back. All right. Mary, where are you going? I have to leave. Goodbye, Bruce. W will I see you tomorrow? I... I don't know. Yes? I'd like to see Mary. Mary? She's a tall, pretty blonde girl. Is she a sign of the stars? Huh? You seem to radiate positive. What? Yes, I do believe you're a positive. They're quite rare, you know. Please, may I see Mary? What's your name? Bruce Miller. Your astral name, I mean. What is all this? No one may enter whose Jupiter is predominant while the forces of Pendennis are striking. Now cut that out. I want to see a girl named Mary. I don't know what her second name is, but she's here. And I'm going to talk to her. Is that clear? Nora, what is this commotion? Oh, I'm sorry you were disturbed. Are you in charge? Yes, I'm temporarily allowed to rule the lodge. Well, there's a, a girl here named Mary. That's correct. I'd like to talk to her. That's quite impossible. Why? She's in seclusion. What kind of nonsense is that? I'm sorry, sir, if it seems odd to you, but one of the reasons people choose to come here is to know the quiet of the sky and the privacy of their souls. I'll ask once more. Are you going to let me talk to Mary? He's radiating violently. So I notice. Well? I've told you, sir. Your request is quite impossible. If you return some other time... When? I have no way of knowing. All I can tell you, sir, is to keep trying. Goodbye. The following day at a local golf course, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor stands waiting for a friend who hit a shot. In the water. I know. Hit another one, Bruce. Well, at least that one's on dry land. Come on. Jim. Hmm? I haven't mentioned this to anybody, but... Well, you know I'm back on that bee kick. Yeah. One day last week over in Alexander County, I... I saw a girl sitting up the hill a ways and just kind of staring at the sky. I walked up and talked to her. We got to be friends and... Well, the next day she came down to meet me. Huh? So far, no problem. She met me every afternoon and took notes while I watched the hive and dictated to her. But yesterday, while we were working, a, a woman came by, spoke to Mary, and they left together. Mama don't like no bee man hanging around? It wasn't her mother. She said something to Mary about it being against the rules, and off they went. Oh, <laughs> Bruce, I wish I could sympathize, but if you didn't know her address after a week, that's your fault. I did, and I went there. They wouldn't let me in. They... A zombie in a long white gown answered the door and gave me double talk. When I started to get mad, some joker horned in and said she was in seclusion. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. He talked like it was a hotel or a rest home. But I can't help feeling Mary's being held against her will. Oh, now, Bruce, this is 1951. Jim, can you help me? Sure. I keep a white charger in the garage. The minute a fair damsel gets in distress, I whip out my trusty suit of armor. I'm serious. But... Okay, Bruce. Has this place got any neighbors? Uh-huh. All right, ask them what goes on. They'll probably know. Okay. In the meantime, there's your ball. Now, will you forget about Liza being chased across the ice by Simon Legree and hit yourself a golf shot?
George, we'd better have a talk. I can't think of anything more enchanting. Save the charm for the customers. Parishioners, Irene. Not customers. Well, whatever you call them, we're about to have one less. Who's that? Mary. Why? She's restless. I think she's losing interest. We can't afford to have her go. Why do you think I'm here? It's natural for her to be restless. Any young girl cooped up for three months would be. But you've got to prevent her from getting bored. How? Irene, astral control isn't a dull subject. If she's beginning to think it is, you're not feeding it the right way. I'll start using a spoon. Really, dear. We share equally, you know, when she signs over her property. What's that got to do with it? You ought to do as much work as I. I do. If you hadn't been careless, she wouldn't have become involved. That's over now. He was back again today. You see him? No. Nora kept him out. You'd better not wait till next week for Mary's induction. We've got to. Why? Your confidence is very touching. But even I can't rush an eclipse of the moon. Let's find another reason. You've got a transfer deed. Get her to sign it and I'll make her a member in 15 minutes. <laughs> Jim, I hate to bother you. Oh, hello, Bruce. I went out to see Mary's neighbors this morning. And oh? Then I stopped by her place again. Oh, how'd you make out? She was still in seclusion. But I'm sure now I was right. Uh, right about what? Her being held. Mm -hmm. uh, about ten women are living there with that man who calls himself the Oracle. He's got them practicing something named astral control. Yeah, what's that? Hogwash, from what I can gather. He's got these women believing all our bodies radiate electrical impulses. And that enough people directing their impulses in unison could alter the movement of the stars. Oh, and why should they do that? Well, he claims the stars rule the Earth. When they move the wrong way, we have wars. When they move the right way, we have peace, and the world is a land of milk and honey. Well, that's just logical enough to be commercial. Can you do anything about getting Mary out? Bruce, look, the Constitution allows people to worship a matchbox if they want to. She can study astral control, voodooism, or whatever she likes. You sound like you don't care. No, it's not that, Bruce. You see, the FBI has jurisdiction over about 120 federal laws. None of them cover religious cults as such. I see. But if it'll make you happy, I'll check our files on this oracle. There may be something in them that'll allow me to be interested officially. Yeah. Now, can you give me a description of him? Sure. Okay, fire away. <laughs> George, Mary's in the hall. What's she doing there? Waiting to see you. How about the paper? She won't sign it. Have her come in. Mary, dear? Thank you. Irene says you wanted to see me, Mary. Yes. You think you're ready for private instructions? That's not why I came. Oh. Well, if there's any personal problem on your mind... Mary, would you like me to leave? No. No, you can hear this. Before I say anything else, though... I want you both to know I'm very grateful for these last three months. All our people feel that way. Maybe you've noticed I haven't been to your lectures these last few days. Of course. When Irene first told me about astral control, I felt it was a chance to start all over again, to do something good with my life. And you're coming along wonderfully. That's why I'm looking forward so to your working with us. I... I'm not going to. What? This wasn't an easy decision. It's all I've thought about for a week, and then this afternoon I made up my mind. To what? I'm leaving. But you... you can't. Irene, if she's made up her mind, there's no point arguing. I'm sorry. I am too, for you. This is your loss, not ours. What are you going to do with yourself? I don't know yet. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Thank you. But I'll, I'll pack and go in the morning. If it's not too early, come in and say goodbye. All right, I will. George, if she leaves without signing that paper, we're broke. She'll sign. What makes you think so? Irene, our motto is faith and confidence. The least you could do is have faith and confidence in the oracle. <laughs>
We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. But now, listen. Those are check-writing machines at the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Every month, those checks go out to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plans. They're checks that mean financial independence for life after you're 65 years old. And here's Mr. Seymour Harris, who started one of those plans back in 1925. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Harris? Right, Mr. Keating. <laughs> I gave up my job in 1950, and I've really been leading the life of Riley ever since. In other words, Mr. Harris, you're now cashing in on the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries, financial independence. Mr. Keating, every month when that equitable check comes in, I'm reminded that I don't owe anybody a cent. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. For several years, I uh, had my eye on a little place outside of town. Last year, we moved in. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. I uh, get in town a couple of times a week for a ball game or a game of cards with the old gang. Uh, that was a big day 26 years ago when my equitable society representative proved to me that... You don't have to be a high-salary man to afford an independent 60s plan. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your Social Security and the life insurance you already own. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not phone your Equitable Society representative or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States? And now back to the FBI file, The Fraudulent Healer. Tonight's case from your FBI file shows a typical confidence racket operated by a man and woman in criminal partnership. While members of the so-called weaker sex have been convicted of all kinds of crimes, they seem to be most at home in the confidence field. Here, they use their charms and femininity to aid their male accomplices. Sometimes, they operate alone. Several years ago, for instance... A woman of great poise and charm posed as a close confidant and friend of an influential and wealthy industrialist and fleeced many otherwise careful bankers out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Many times, as in tonight's file, these adventuresses work behind the smoke screen of a fake organization or phony charity. Before joining any unknown organization or even contributing to it, your FBI urges you to check its authenticity with your Better Business Bureau, community chest, or your local authorities. Tonight's file continues the following morning on the street outside the local FBI field office. Bruce Miller is approaching the building as Special Agent Taylor comes out. Jim! Jim! Oh, hey, Bruce, you're just the one I want to see. I hope you don't think I'm making a pest of myself. Well, I wouldn't have been calling you for the last hour if I did. I didn't took that description you gave me and sent back a file on somebody named George Brown. Well, that oracle's first name is George. Uh, is uh, this his picture? Yes. You sure? Positive. Come on, walk me over to the garage, will you? Okay. I'm going out to see Mr. Brown. Who is he? He's a confidence man. He's wanted back east. That's what puts me into the case. Jim, this is wonderful. Well, might be a break for your girl. Can I drive out with you? No, no, Bruce, this is business. But you can give me that exact address. 28 Smoky Hill Drive. 28 Smoky Hill Drive. And Jim. Yo. How long will this take you? Well, that depends on Brown. You stick by your phone. I'll call you as soon as I get back to the office. Go ahead, Barry. Thanks. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. We wanted to make sure you didn't leave before we said our farewells. I just started to pack. We also wanted to give you another chance. To do what? Come back into our little circle. Oh, I'm sorry. I still feel the way I did last night. That's your privilege, my dear. We certainly wouldn't want to force anyone to believe as we do. Oh, I know that. You don't have any unkind feelings for our movement, do you? Oh, not at all. Splendid. Irene has a form all filled out. 
And if you'd care to contribute your property to astral control, it would ease the pain we feel at losing you. Here it is. I have a pen handy. Oh, I'll take it with me and think about it. Now it's my turn to be sorry. I don't understand. I hate to be crass, but I'm afraid I can't allow you to leave without signing. What? Well, you can't do this. But I am. I won't sign it. Irene, you know where Mary keeps her jewels? In the top drawer. Get them. Irene! Get back. Uh, 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 uh. Here they are, George. Fine. Let's see what we've got. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to get these to Casey. Oh, George, she's bleeding. I think she's really hurt. Oh? Well, then, we'd better get started immediately. Yes? Good morning. I'd like to see Mr. Brown. My, you radiate a distinct positive. I beg your pardon. Your impulses... Just wait till the Oracle sees you. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm here for. May I come in? Oh, the Oracle can't speak with you now. Oh, why not? Yes, I'm sure you're positive. Ma'am, why can't I see Mr. Brown? He's not here. Oh, where'd he go? To gaze at the stars with Miss Irene. Yes, I'm sure, but where? It must have been a long trip. The Oracle said they were taking the train. What train? To the stars. Ma'am, is there anyone else here I can talk to? Everyone else is in seclusion. Mm. All right, this paper I have here is a search warrant. It permits me to come inside and look around, so I guess that's what I'd better do now. Taylor speaking. Jim, this is Bruce. I just got your message. Oh, Bruce, your girl Mary's at the hospital. Huh? I missed George Brown and that woman that you told me about. Oh, what's the matter with Mary? I found her unconscious in her room. Oh, which hospital is she at? Memorial, but you won't be able to see her, Bruce. She's not being allowed visitors. Well, what happened to her? Well, severe contusions of the head. The doctors expect her to be all right, though. Oh, by the way, her name is Cook. I guess it's all right if I call the hospital. Yeah, sure. Did you find out what was going on out there? Yeah, your Mary must be a very wealthy girl. Brown was trying to promote her into turning everything she had over to astral control. Uh, that means him. Mm-hmm. But I guess she wouldn't sign the transfer deed. I found it in her wastebasket. That's what they must have had the fight about. You're not letting him get away with this, are you? <laughs> not if I can find them. All I know so far, though, is they took a train, but nobody at either station remembers seeing them or selling them tickets. Or... Oh. oh, pardon me, Bruce Lee. Taylor speaking. This is Memorial Hospital, Mr. Taylor. Yes. Dr. Corday says you can see Miss Cook now. Thank you. I'll be right there. And then he told Irene to get my jewelry. I tried to stop her, but he pushed me away, and I hit my head when I fell over the chair. I see. How much jewelry did you have? Oh, it was worth, I guess, about $20,000. Miss Cook, may I ask you a personal question? Yes. How did you ever get mixed up with George Brown? Through Irene. Oh. Uh -huh. I met her at a party back home. You see, five years ago, both my parents were killed. I inherited everything. Having money, I picked up a lot of new friends. The whirl I went on would have put an honest merry-go-round to shame. And then I met Irene. She told me about astral control and... Well, it looked like a chance to make my life over. Mm -hmm. I see now it was just part of their plan to get my money. Yes, I see. Well, Miss Cook, I was asked not to stay too long, so I'd better be going. Oh, I'm sorry I can't help you find them. Well, now, you say you never heard them talk about any friends. Only that person, Casey. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown mentioned him just before I passed out. Well, maybe I could get an idea who that is if you could remember exactly what he said about Casey. Mm, well, let me see. Mm. Mm hmm yes, yes, that was it. He said, I can't wait to get these to Casey. Let's see. Nothing here in his record or hers about anyone with that name. Casey. Hey, wait a minute. Casey might not be a person at all. You 
you'll get laughed at one of these jerkwater towns. Now, Irene... I wouldn't care so much, except that you've got the jewelry. Sentimental soul, but don't worry. There's always time to jump out with the papers. Why do you keep buying them? To read. But they've got the same things in all of them. I feel more comfortable knowing there's nothing about us. There wouldn't be anyway. Why not? The only way to get your name in those papers is to be a prize-winning cow. Very funny. Yes, well, I'll tell you something that's not so funny. Our touch is gone. I was getting tired of it anyway. The money from that jewelry won't last forever. Doesn't have to. I've thought of another deal. What kind? Selling masterpieces. Spell that. You'll be a widow who doesn't realize the value of the paintings in your late husband's estate. And you? An art collector who just happens to know the paintings were smuggled into this country. We'll find mean men who want to cheat you out of those pictures. Where will we work? New York or Boston. This deal requires a locale where the citizens are positive they're smart enough not to be cheated. Good evening. You must have the wrong compartment. No, Brown. I'm in the right place. Here's a warrant for your arrest. Huh? And uh, one for you, too, Miss Howard. George Brown and Irene Howard were tried in federal court and convicted of violating the interstate transportation of stolen property statute. What Special Agent Taylor noticed in reviewing the arrest records was that George Brown had been convicted twice of swindles in Kansas City, a place many people call KC. He learned the schedule of their train and caught up to the fugitives by flying to an intermediate stop. And thus, your FBI closed the file on these two criminals. However, the convictions interrupted the careers of only this pair. There still are confidence men and women at large throughout the country, and they are at work this very minute. You can keep from ever being numbered among their victims, but there's a price on that freedom. It's the same price we pay for liberty, eternal vigilance. Now, one final question on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Is there any fixed amount I have to put into a plan like this? No, the amount is strictly up to you. For instance, you can start now with a modest plan and expand it later on when your salary goes up. In any event, the man to see is your Equitable Society representative. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Marriage Swindle. Its title, The Runaway Corpse. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson. And Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Robert Cole, Joyce McCluskey, Ted Osborne, Yvonne Patey, and Alice Reinhardt. This is your FBI, a Jerry Devine production, was directed by Sid Goodwin. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Runaway Corpse on This Is Your FBI. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC the American Broadcasting Company.